Hey, everybody. What's going on, guys? I'm Jay. I'm Chris, the bird nerd. And we are... <laughs> the Bird Brains. The Bird Brains. Cheers. Cheers. Definitely uh, check out the merch. Uh, yeah, we got some uh, sweet coffee mugs here. And uh, if you guys stay on, watch the end of the podcast, maybe we'll be giving one of them away to you guys. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. We're not bribing you to listen or watch <laughs> because no we are we are there's no i don't even have a clever excuse we're straight up bribing people come on i will i will say though i feel like the logo has been a hit we've got some good feedback on it um and uh, even my wife said she likes it when if i get a compliment from my wife anything birds i mean that's 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 a big deal <laughs> big so day yeah day. yeah <laughs> yeah so no that it was that was a you're better at we were talking about that this week you're better at the the digital uh what are the, i don't even know what to call the it the thumbnails and all that stuff and yeah like the the um digital art maybe yeah. is what it should be i i'm trying to learn from you on that and you've got a brother who's a great i guess it's graphic design you've got a brother who yeah. does it so i've, I've got a kind of brother cheating. does it and then i've got something come down the pipeline i've got another guy that's putting together some pretty cool thumbnails for me um that that are pretty advanced and he's a good friend kind of doing me a favor. So hopefully here in the next few weeks, we'll be able to see that too. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll put it on one of our podcasts. So you guys can rate it and see what you think. So. Awesome. I feel like you have a brother for everything. And like, I come from a big family too, but you, <laughs> yours is bigger. I got, I've got a big, big family. Yes. Lots of brothers, yeah. lots of help. <laughs> Anytime something comes up, you're like, Oh yeah. One of my brothers does that. I'm like, ah, sure. You know, the um, saying you're, you're you're stronger in numbers. That's that's for there sure. There you go. Especially, yeah, especially we're strong. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, well, I guess let's start off with um, let's do a little aviary update before. So today's topic, by the way, uh, you probably already seen the title by now. We're going to talk about mixed species aviaries, keeping birds with other species, right? Yeah, the um, goods and the bads. The goods, the bads, the uglies. Um, yeah. But let's start with, uh, so what's going on with you and your aviary? Because we haven't talked about that on the pod in a while. Yeah, man. I think that's, that's great. We've got, uh, you know, I've, I, I try to set it up to where we breed year round um, with with my indoor shed in, in the winters. And so we're kind of, we're ramping down on like the zebra finch breeding, um, some of the society finch breedings. And I posted a couple of videos on that. Um the the Goulian finch, we're kind of in the middle of it, but it hasn't been as strong as I hoped it would be. So I haven't really put a whole lot out there on that. But so kind of winding down on, in those areas. And then we're we're coming up with springtime. We're coming up big with the canaries. My males are starting to sing like crazy. And probably here in, the next, too. Month, here in the next month, we'll be putting the canaries together. And then also my parrot finches, they're all itching to breed again. They, they've molted throughout the winter and... Um, got your jars that I ordered. So we're, uh, we're going to, I, I got to paint those. Hopefully I can do that this weekend and maybe get something set up for them here in the next week or two to get them going. So some cool updates. We'll, we'll be coming with that though, with my aviary. How about yours, Matt? Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the jars, so I put those in and I'm, I'm pretty pumped between the Mason jar nest. So I already had, I already had 12 and I ended up throwing a couple away that like, you know, I, I think I told you that when I uh, told you about them, they, Every once in a while, I screwed one up when I drilled through the top or like they got <laughs> gross, you know, but they're like a buck. So, OK, if it's bad, yeah. you just toss it. But so I got 12 more. I ended up throwing away like three or four. So now I have like a bunch. I have like 20 of those. Nice. And then Hagen gave me a bunch of the living world woven finch nests, like the classic finch nests. And then I got some more nest boxes. So ended up I have a total of 80 nests this Holy year. Cow, man. That's so awesome. it took me. Jeez. A long time. It took me a couple of hours today to put them all in, but I'm pretty well, psyched about it. Well, and, and those who are watching, if you guys haven't already, Jay posted a video on his YouTube. What, last week, was it, on the different yeah. nest boxes and, and types of nests that you use? And you've got the example of your jars and how you put those together. So I thought that was pretty cool. And, yeah, I'm taking that idea. I'm, I'm running with that sucker, and hopefully it'll work out this year for me. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, you know, just – I guess I'll talk about it real quick. So I was thinking of, I was doing, I do a lot of like deep research, especially if I'm going to try to breed like a harder to breed species. And it was the parrot finches that sparked this when I still had parrot finches, which I'm, they're coming back. I'm going to figure out a way to get them back, but I'll get you some. Um, yeah, we're going to figure it out. But, um, 
so in the wild, a lot of these birds, they nest in like hollows and trees or like little, you know, like a rotten tree, like kind of what you think of when you think of like a, a lot of the wild birds you see, but in the jungle, right? And I was like, how can I recreate that in an aviary? And everyone would say, oh, nest box, but it's kind of not, it's not the same. It's not like a dark tube, right? That's what I was going for. I was like, what if I just buy mason jars, spray paint them and drill a hole in the front? And turns out, awesome. especially for paired finches, it works it really works great and it's super cost effective. And, you know, like even if you just have zebras or societies and you're like, man, I really don't want to spend, you know, 20 bucks on uh, a bunch of nest boxes or buy a bunch of whatever, they're, they're really easy to clean. They're reusable. And like I, I was talking about, if, if one goes wonky, you just toss it cause it was $2. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah um, I love that, man. That's awesome. How, how how's the rest of your aviary doing got anything coming up everything's good um i mean just really the the next thing i'm waiting on is you and uh, my friend alex uh for <laughs> i'm waiting for your weather to improve uh, yeah um, i know man i looked at your i've actually got like on my phone app for the weather i i put in i added where you where you live like your city in utah oh nice so i can start to track like i feel kind of like a stalker but i'm just like what's oh, <laughs> going on today but i looked and it's like in the 30s for the next week so yeah that, our weather's so bipolar man we, we legit wake up to snow and then by the afternoon you've got like 50 degree temperatures and you feel like oh man spring's coming and then another snowstorm comes through it's it's crazy but well, we'll get there. I mean, it's it's coming in the next couple of weeks, and we just need to ship. We really need like a solid four day window where it stays <laughs> like above forty five, and we'll it's going to happen. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and I also I pulled the rest of the birds that are coming your way today. I've left like all the young Gouldians in, um. But now I've pulled everybody out. So because breeding started today, so I was like, all right, let's pull all the babies out. So uh, nice. my holding cages are like full now, which is kind of cool. That's um, awesome, man. and we're just hanging out. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so the, the pairs I've got are, you know, they're building, they were building nests today. Like a, it's so cool when you put nest boxes in after they've been out for six months, it's so funny to me how quickly the birds are like, I'm like still screwing them in. And there's like a oh, Goldie yeah. on the branch right above me. Like, Hey, what, uh, what do you got there? But, and you know what? For how shy Goldie and Finches are, they're usually one of the first ones that inspect a new nest. Um, yeah, you know, it's like you put new food out there and the, they're super cautious and they'll, they, they'll let other birds eat at first. You throw a right. nest in there and those suckers are just like straight to it. It's crazy. I call it nest shopping. They just kind of yeah. come check it out and you, they'll like talk to their mate, like maybe this <laughs> yeah. one and she's over to a different one and he's like, okay, I'll fly over there and look at that yep. one. <laughs> it's funny. Um, all right. So speaking of all these different species, mixed species aviaries. Yes. Um, I guess we start with, uh, we both have right now mixed species aviaries. Um, yeah. the, I mean, and I, for me, the main reason is that I basically, I don't have room to have, if I could have dedicated aviaries, I would, I don't know how I would do it. I think I would do it probably how Tony Arnold does it, where I'd have 10 aviaries and I have one pair of each species per aviary. Um, but I'm not set up for that. I've got one big aviary, one big flight and some holding cages. So you got to make yep. it work with what you got. Yep. Is that, I, I, I mean, uh, you have the split, which is better than what I have. I do have the split and, and really the, I, you, I utilize the split, you know, in between my aviaries, uh, really to separate genders for the most part. I do have certain species that I, that breed better in an aviary setting rather than a cage setting. Um, so there are some species that, I, that I'll put the male and females together, but I, I primarily use it for to divide the sexes. But you know, when I was a kid, so my best friend, his dad, he was big into birds. He still is and is a good, good friend of mine. Um, I think for the Utah area, this guy, he was ahead of his time and he had a huge aviary in his backyard and he set it up pretty cool he had a, a large aviary that had bigger hook bills in and then he had a separate aviary where he had smaller finches and he had a lot of like the african finches you know like the orange cheeks and the cordon blues and um the gold breast wax bills um and he had them all in the in a mixed flight together and he had live plants and stuff which for for utah and especially at that time not very many people are doing that because we had cold winters they're hard species to keep whatever but 
uh, he was like my inspiration. Like I remember just going to my friend's house and being like, dude, can we just like sit in your backyard? And he didn't care about the birds. He's like, no, let's go play, you know? And I'm like, okay. Uh, but right. I'd go back there and he had just like these beautiful colors everywhere. So I think that was my first inspiration of like a mixed aviary. Primarily, I love the colorful birds as does everybody, right? And and I do have other other finches because I am a breeder that, that are, I'm, you know, are particular to me, but they're not as colorful, but like your Goulian finches, a lot of your African wax bills, you know, they've got some really bright pops of color. Some of your other Australian finches. Um, so I love going out to the aviary and seeing so many different colors and so many different yeah. personalities of these birds. And I would say primarily that's why I like mixed aviaries and why I have one. And then there's the other piece of the breeding aspect and, and that's kind of a little bit different, but I think that's my, my biggest, why I've always wanted a mixed aviary is just to go out, enjoy the birds, see the colors, the different songs, different personalities. You know, there's something new every day with these birds and it's pretty cool. Yeah. I think, I think that there, there's that for me too. And when I think about some of like other aviaries that I've seen that are really cool, like uh, Rancel Paradise Aviary, his outdoor aviary, yeah, mixed species, awesome. really cool. And then he does a really good job filming it too. Like his is smaller than mine, but he films it really well. It makes it yeah, seem like a does. giant. Yeah. Um, and then, but like uh, uh, Tina, I guess I'll say her whole name because she has it all public everywhere. But Tina Billings out in Washington State, she has like three huge aviaries, but they're all like these porches on her house and they have like framed artwork and like couches and stuff in there. And it's like kind of a greenhouse type thing, but also there are birds there. So like she'll have like a, like a woven normal finch nest. And then like next to it, there'll be like wax bills nesting in like an old teacup that's on its side yeah, and stuff like that. So like, it's cool to see what people do, but yeah, I agree with you that, that, you know, the way my house is set up, you could be at my house. You could not even know I had birds at all. And you come around the corner in my yeah. backyard and then there's the aviary. Yep. And the, I love watching people be like, you have what? You have a hundred birds. And then they come <laughs> around the corner and they're like, yeah. whoa, I love watching yep. that. Whoa. Reaction. And you yeah. get that. You're right. It's that color. It's like, oh, you have a rainbow of birds back here. Yeah. And, and usually more times than not, especially those people that, have no interest in birds at all. They usually leave my house thinking, man, I want to get some birds, you know? So it's cool to inspire others to, and to, to show them that you can have something really cool. You can have it outside of your house, right? Um, not always has, doesn't always have to be inside, but it's, it's cool to inspire others. And, and then they, they're always asking the questions, right? Okay. What's that one that looks like a rainbow? What's that one that's yep. all pink? What's that, you know? And, and it's pretty fun to educate people and same thing, same reaction. Now with my big aviary, people can see it um, from, from the road, but before then, you know, the same thing they'd go and then they'd walk into my shed and see what I had. And they were just like, wow, this is crazy. Like I, I didn't even think you could do something like this. It, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Your, um, your new aviary is like up over the fence. It's so legit. Yeah, it's yeah. big. It's, it, it, I'm basically planning for the future. So if my wife ever kicks me out and makes me live with the birds, I'll have a big enough space for the birds yeah, and for me. So you'll have a good bedroom. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'll, t I'll take on what Tina does and I'll add some couches in there and, you know, yeah, a little TV and you're good to go. There you go. Um, you you got it heated. You won't freeze to death. Yeah, that's true. That's nice. Yeah. You, she's going to see this and you're going to be out there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love you, sweetie. <laughs> All right. So those are some of the benefits. Um, I'd also say like other benefits, uh, if you're going to colony breed, right, that's a good way to do it. Um, we've talked about this before, but like teacher birds. So if you have birds that you have a hard time getting to eat a, a mixed diet, getting to eat, you know, egg food, mealworms, all kinds of things. You know, if you have like, for instance, canaries or shaft tails in with those birds, they're going to show them, Hey, this, when yeah. that weird looking dude comes in and puts this down every morning, like, that's good. Let's go eat it. Yeah. Um, and now, I mean, if I'm near the door in the aviary in the morning, they'll, all the birds are sitting <laughs> in there waiting. So they, yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. Um, also that I think is a big benefit of the mixed aviary, um, that, you know, but with the positives, there are a lot of potential negatives. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of those negatives really, it, 
do your homework. You know, I, I wouldn't say, say, say you, you build this sweet aviary or you've got a space where you can put multiple birds in. Do your homework uh, before you just go out and buy a lot of random birds. And, and I'll have people come, you know, that, that are buying birds for the first time. And, and I always try to educate them on, okay, if you're wanting to keep multiple birds together, these would be your starter birds. And then these are the ones that I would precaution you on. And so I would say majority of your finches can get along. Um, depending on your space, right? The bigger the space, the better. And the that's more, a huge thing. The more your birds can get along together. Some of your pushier species, like your zebra finches, your canaries, if you have multiple canaries together, they can get pretty feisty with each other. Um, some of like your African wax bills um, that are territorial when they breed can get a little of aggressive, and it's usually with their same species, not so much with others. If you're keeping bigger birds, right, I would not recommend any large hook bills with any of your small finches. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, Jay. Uh, you know, I've got a cockatiel, uh, Mikey. He's our family pet. I do have him with my finches, and I would strongly suggest that you don't ever keep a cockatiel with finches because uh, they're grumpy and, and they can uh, bite your finches' toes off if they get a hold of the birds, things like that. Uh, parakeets, I would put in that same same category. Actually, I've, I've growing up, you know, we had an aviary in our backyard. My dad had it split in two. We had two different aviaries. One aviary, we had the finches and it's mostly zebra finches, a few society finches. The other aviary, we had lovebirds and parakeets. We got the bright idea to put rabbits in there once and they dug hole underneath and, uh, and through their hole connected the two aviaries. And we had parakeets that went down those holes and came out. And within one day, you know, we had several zebra finches with bloody feet and missing toes. I mean, they, they don't go to attack them, but if they're right there next to them, they, they nip at They'll them, just you know, whack and they them, can do some know? damage, you know. So those are a few. Just make sure you do your homework and, and don't just put any bird together because uh, there are some that, you know, your zebra finches, you can house them with most, but they're pushy birds. They're annoying, right? They take over other birds' nests. They steal their nests. They're really nosy. They, they can get aggressive and continuously chase birds away if they're close to their nests, things like that, you know. So I would never breed like a zebra finch and a goldian finch together because the zebra finch would win every time and would just push them away. So, um, but you can still keep them together, right? Um, but if you're trying to breed, then that, then you then you want to make sure you do your homework and, and there could be some negatives there and some, some birds that could potentially get and injured I, due to aggression. I do breed them together, but you've got to have the space for that. And then yeah. the other, the other key, uh, the other big thing I would say in all of this is it's, there is an element of this. I always remind people there are no absolutes on any of this. It is, 100%. it is bird specific, not just species yeah. specific. So like my, I am very picky with what zebra finches I will keep based on how they interact with other birds. So yeah. there have been, I had a zebra finch once that put them in, everything seemed fine, put them in the aviary. And within five minutes, they had another one of my males by the wing and they threw it across the aviary. It's like, all right, well, you're back out. <laughs> so lived in the aviary for five minutes. So, well, and, and you've got a bork parakeet that's been aggressive to your birds too. And, and I have what, 12 borks and not a single one of them has ever shown any type of aggression so yeah absolutely bird specific yeah and my uh, you know so i've got a pair of borks right so my female she she could live in the aviary all the time she'd be fine she's never a problem my male i have i caught the reason they don't live in the aviary anymore i caught him in the act of killing a clutch of parrot finches so not only was that expensive and you know all the problems you have with like oh that you know i really needed those parrot finches etc but yeah, just for whatever reason, he didn't. Yeah. He doesn't like it, so they have to live alone. And he, it's yeah. just him like that. And then I had my, I've had my budgies in my aviary in the past, and they weren't aggressive. They, they really weren't a problem to the birds, but they were a problem to the physical nests themselves. So, for whatever reason, my budgie, and he still does this to like the. I do have canaries in with him now, and doves, and he'll still do this from time to time. He just goes and like tears a corner off of the nest. Like that's what he does that day. And so, 
I'm like every once in a while I have to like when the birds aren't looking, I, I have these like wicker canary style nests that I use for the doves and the canaries. Every once in a while when they're not looking, I have to like take the eggs out, swap the nest over, put the eggs back and put the new like wicker part in. It's just every once in a while, he's just good to destroy one. And especially <laughs> with the smaller finches, like no African bird, none of the African right. wax bills are going to breed if they're not totally safe and unmolested. For and sure. so, you know, it was well, just yeah, not a good a bird, idea. If you get a bird that's just snooping around their nest, I mean, with some of those species, that's enough for them to abandon, right? So, right, yeah, if you got some nosy birds like your zebra finches or your parakeets that are not looking to harm anything, but just snooping out nests, that, that's enough to deter some of those sensitive species. I mean, and that would, you know, it, they're a lot bigger, right? They're three times as big. I mean, I, I wouldn't be trying to make babies if somebody ripped a hole in the roof of my house and was looking <laughs> through it. You know, I get that, right? That makes sense. Um, For sure. But yeah, so I mean, that that's just, these are lessons. I guess what I'm saying is these are all lessons we've learned, either the easy way or the hard way, but we've learned them and now we're trying to pass them on to the, to the listener here. Um, yeah, I mean, those are really, those are the big examples. And I mean, they're, species is, is a good guideline. Like, so for instance, my orange weavers, they, I could, yeah. I could keep them in the aviary during the non-breeding season, but the minute the male comes into color, he's going to pick a spot in the aviary. He's going to start to weave and then he's going to block off like at minimum, very violently defend like a 12 square foot ish track yep. in the aviary and like Torben um, who has, it's like tropical aviary birds, I think is his YouTube. Um, I'm sure you've seen him before. He has a mm -hmm. 60 yep. meter long outdoor aviary. So wow. yeah, if I had a 200 foot long aviary, I, and he has weavers in there, right? Like multiple males, because yeah. if they have an issue, they can just get like a hundred feet apart. I would do that too. I'm sure it would be fine. So a lot of this is space. Yeah, you know, you're not going to be able to mix even zebras and societies in like a two foot long cage. The zebras yeah. are just going to rule the roost. So you've got a lot of this is the space, the individual bird, and then more broadly, the species. And there are some species like your grenadiers, your purple grenadiers. They're just never going to be, right. they're never going to jive with yep. some of your less, you know, Cuban melodious finches. They're not going to do a mixed aviary. Cubans, your crimson red finches, your whitas, they're similar to the weavers. Uh, yeah. yeah. They just, they just I tried whitas. I tried whitas in a mixed aviary and um, I had a pintail whitas. So they're black and white and they kind of almost look like they're in a prison jumpsuit. And yeah. <laughs> I saw my male just attacking another bird and I was like, oh, now I get why you're in the prison jumpsuit. Like you're violent. <laughs> Which is a such cool a shame. bird, though. They're so cool. They're super long tails. I mean, the males are beautiful. The females, they're just kind of a brown color, but males are beautiful birds. Yeah, and yeah, but it, it you just can't. I mean, you just there's not. It's not going to happen. Um, and there are a lot of compatibility charts online that will help you figure that out, sort of from a baseline. But then there's some weird ones, like just as an example. This is one of my favorite examples. I got asked the other day, actually, by a friend of mine in Europe, why I don't keep greenback twin spots, because mm. they're not aggressive. They're small little African finch. Caveat, they will, they are aggressive to each other. Yep. So I couldn't keep two pairs either way. But if I kept one pair, I'd still have a problem because I have star finches. And star finches have a red head, a green body, and white spots. And even though they're from a completely different continent, right? Com you know, not related to the greenback twin spots at all, they look a lot like a greenback twin spot, and yep. so they're not compatible. So you have that's two birds that otherwise are peaceful that don't mesh. Yeah, and that's similar to like your red crimson finches. And I don't, they're not. We don't. I don't even know if we have any in the U.S. If we do, I don't. I have very rarely never seen, seen them, one. But, yeah. Um, any other birds that have any type of red on? red feathers i mean the, they'll attack your cuban finches right any other birds that have yellow so like your Goulian finches they'll attack so yeah yep yep just do your homework you know mixed aviaries are awesome they're beautiful 
you can breed in them. Uh, we've, you know, we've if you followed Jay and I's channels. You've seen that we've bred birds, you know, yeah, pretty successfully. 100, 100, and, 100 plus out last yeah, year. Yeah, you know, in, in a mixed aviary. And so um, do what works best for you. Do your homework. And But, you know, still there may be a species that's supposed to be gentle, like the Borks. And then you get a, a male like <laughs> like Jay's that, that starts attacking some of the birds and, and you got to adjust, right? So it, it, it also pays to know to watch to understand the current birds you have because there are exceptions to all the rules like my cockatiel that lives harm harmoniously with all of my finches for the last seven years that i've had him and i've never had an injured bird from him you know so it's just, yeah, it's just special, case by though. case yes very special i would never put any other cockatiel with my with my finches in any way but um yeah case by case know your birds but um, if you can have a mixed aviary, those, that's the way to go. They're, they're, they're awesome. And to see the different birds live together in these big spaces, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And I, you know, it's the only way to have for me and I, probably for a lot of the listeners, it's the only way to have a lot of cool different species other than, you know, a bunch of cages, which yeah. a, uh, that's a lot of work. It's not as great for the birds. The, yeah. The one big aviary with, everybody hanging out in it is the way to go, but it definitely is more work. You have to do a lot more research, a lot more watching, observing to get there than you do. If you just say one pair per cage all down the wall, which not knocking that a lot of people, as long as you got big enough cages, good yeah. to go. But, um, it doesn't have that same wow factor that, you know, I yeah. feel like I get, I know I and get, I see people do it. And and I've got individual cages that I breed birds into, right? But it, it's twice the work, right? You have the same amount of work per cage. So if you have a bunch of cages, you're, you're just doubling, tripling that work. Whereas in an aviary, you usually have one watering station, one feeding station. You do have an air, a bigger area to clean up, um, but usually that mess is contained to wherever you're housing your food and mm -hmm. water dishes. And, and you can try to contain that as best as you can. And so, yeah. And I will say, you know, pro tip, if you're going to do the community aviary and you have like for, in my example, like zebras with more gentle birds and things like that, a good way to help diffuse some of that aggression, have what multiple watering stations. Like in my big aviary, yeah. I have three water stations and I have, I, let me think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight food stations. Nice. And that, and, yeah. And, and on Keeps the same, them from fighting. right. The same note, be strategic on where you put your nest boxes too, right? Spread them throughout in different locations, different heights. So, you know, usually they'll have a favorite nesting spot and the most dominant pair will always get that. But if you have 50 other choices spread throughout, chances are, they're going to start selecting those other nest boxes as well. And, and it hopefully will eliminate the aggression because you've got it spread out and, and that helps as well. So be strategic on where you put your nest boxes if you're going to breed in your mixed aviary. Right. And like I said, at the beginning of this, I have, I have 80 nest boxes, right? So 75 of those are in the big aviary. I only have about 30 ish pairs in the big aviary. So each of those birds has basically two to choose from. And that's why. You know, yeah. it's a, I didn't do it because I like the look of nest boxes, right? I, you know, it's, it would have saved me a couple hours today of just drilling them in over and over. My shoulders are tired and I didn't do it just because I'm a nest box collector, right? And, and if you can, you know, look at, watch Jay's video. He's got a huge variety of different nest boxes to use, right? So, and then that mm -hmm. caters to the different species you have because some species may want the open nest like your canaries and your pigeons right, or your doves. Others might like the little closed tubes, like your jars, like your parrot finches, you know, some of the box nest boxes are, you know, zebra finches favorites and Goulian fin finch favorites, things like that. So they all have a different taste. So it's nice to put up different nest boxes in a mix and a variety to try to cater to those species. Yeah. And I find that almost all of them kind of pick one type, but then every yeah. once in a while you'll have some species that like my Goulians, I think I, Last year, I had Gouldians come out of a mason jar. I had Gouldians come out of a hanging, like, actually, I bought it from Hobby Lobby, uh, like one of their hanging birds, and out of a nest box. So, like, and yep. uh, two of those were the same pair. So, they'll, 
some birds care a lot. Some birds are, it's more about location than it is about the style of nest box, but you'll figure it out. And some of that's trial and error too. Yeah. And sometimes you'll hang all your nest boxes and they'll be like my starfinches and they'll build their own nest outside of a nest box, whether it's in a plant or somewhere up in the corner that they can get the cocoa fiber through and they will, they'll build their own nest. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you'll, you'll have those, those cases too. And they just may not choose any of the nest boxes. (laughs) Which is fine too. I love seeing that. I, that happens yeah, to me cool. every once in a while. I like seeing it. It used to stress me out more because I was like, what if they don't build it right? And I've yeah. <laughs> kind of learned, like, they might mess up once or twice, but they have to learn how to build it. And then once they do it, you know, that's what they're doing in the wild. So absolutely, you know, that, that seems like it works. Um, I think that's all I got for mixed species, you know, just when it comes down to it, have more space than you need, do your research, watch your birds, make sure you don't have a you know, a problem bird that's going to surprise you. And then you should be in good shape. And we've got there, we, we've got a lot of resources, a lot of bird breeders right now around the world have some pretty stellar mixed aviaries. So I would encourage you to reach, look, watch their videos, you know, look and see what species they have together. I know at different points throughout the year, they've mentioned, you know, the types of species that they have in their aviaries, the types of setups. So yeah, do your homework. Um, get a good solid foundation. And then, you know, some of it still is just going to be trial and error, um, depending on what birds and species you put in there. And and Jay and I, we're still learning by trial and error too, with some of our species. So, you know, it's, it's, that's kind of the, the fun part of keeping birds and and breeding them and and keeping a mixed aviary. So. Yeah. I was going to say though, that's, that's part of what makes the hobby fun. You know, it, it, it can be a little bit set it up and sit back, but a lot of times you're like, Oh, you know, I made a, I made a mistake here. I got to change this. Or <laughs> what if I did it this way kind of yeah. a thing, you know, there's, there's always, I find that it's pretty easy for me to like, my wife asked me when I started the YouTube, she's like, how are you going to have like so many videos? And like, I never have a problem. I never yeah. have a problem oh, coming yeah. up with content. Yeah. yeah. It's like I've always got and, something going on. I just film it. And, and you guys, leave some pretty awesome comments and questions down below of, of topics for us to cover. And so that helps as well. So keep that coming. Yeah, definitely keep that coming. And we, just so y'all know, you know, I, I don't know, between these, the six episodes we posted so far, we probably had something like 50 comments and at least half of them are something about, can you cover this? Can you cover that? The answer is just blanket. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've got a list where we add to that list every time someone creates a new one. If we haven't gotten to it yet, that's just because we haven't filmed that episode yet. So yeah, be a little bit patient with us. We're, we are going to get to all of those questions. For sure. All right. Well, I think that's it for this one. Cheers. We'll oh, catch wait. you in the next one. You know what, oh. Jay? I did promise what? some swag. Oh, yeah. And we got to plug. We've, we got to tell everyone where to go, too. That's right. Okay. I've got an extra mug here. So pretty sweet. It's got the Bird Brains logo on there. What do you think, Jay? What what do we want? What do we want him to do to get some free merch this round? Some good ideas Hmm. flowing here. Uh, Yeah, I think you've got to comment, and I think you've got to you've got to suggest a podcast episode. So we we don't necessarily have to choose it next, but you've got to give us an idea. So I want to know more about X, or how do I handle X? Okay, right. So like the podcast, comment on there, and I'm going to add in a third share the podcast so that we can expand this out put those three in the comments that you've done it and we'll select a a person to get a a free uh bird brains mug coming your way all right very cool um you can find me on i'm either just the javiary which is j-a-y-v-i-a-r-y or i'm the underscore javiary i'm on instagram youtube Facebook threads and I've actually, I've been dabbling in Reddit. So I'm starting to get some DMS on there now, which is kind of like, Oh great. I've opened up another thing. I got to check every day now, but I'm on there. Try I'm in R slash finches and some other stuff, trying to help people out. A lot of, uh, I'll just say a lot of interesting information on there. So trying to kind of write that <laughs> ship a little bit. Nice. Um, but I can say they need some experts on Reddit. So that's good that you're on there. Yeah. So, uh, hit me up. And, um, yeah. you know, I think that where, where can they find you, Chris? Yeah. Um, YouTube, Facebook, just at bird nerd. 
And then uh, Instagram is at birdnerd4. So posting videos and pictures daily and weekly. So come check us out. Hopefully you guys, if you're not already following us, click that subscribe channel for both of our channels and uh, help support us so that we can continue to support you guys and put these videos out. So thank All you. right. Awesome. We'll catch you all in the next one. See you guys. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>